Hello everyone and welcome to an episode so stacked, it's almost like a Ooh. deck of cards. I'm Jordan Shenton. And I'm Harrison! And we are the most delightful, <laughs> delectable Grief Burrito. Ooh. So today we have an interesting episode on collectible card games uh, and... I'm sorry, you put a bit in has where I didn't realize you had. Almost like someone didn't read their own notes. Today we're talking Pokemon. We're talking <laughs> Magic the Gathering. And we are talking others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like someone didn't read their notes that they made today. Yep. <laughs> we also have, along with us, a special guest. The Jim Jong-un. Say hello, Jim. Hello. Harrison, hit the intro. Hiya! <laughs> I hope you slap that in the intro. Okay, let's do that this. Jim, thank you for joining okay. us. <laughs> thank you for coming on the show. Thank, thank you. you very much for having part. me. I'm sorry. I've completely interrupted. Carry on. I am offended. I think you should leave. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> so Jordan suggested you come on the show as a general pokey master yourself. Like you know all about the collectibles. You can sprout off all of the Pokemon in order, which I thought really impressive. So first of all, can you do that for me? Um, I don't think I know. Well, I don't. There's a lot of Pokemon. I, there is a good Sporkle quiz to test yourself if you think you can do that, but I cannot do that right now. Can you do the original 151 now? <laughs> right All the now. pressure. <laughs> That's so much pressure. Um, well, Bulbasaur's number one, so it's Bulbasaur, Venusaur, Ivysaur. Uh, that's as far Three as down. I've been. Yeah. I don't think. <laughs> I, th I don't even know. I think Squirtle is fourth. That's about as far as I'm cheated. confident. Jordan's lied to me. And I, I feel like the episode's <laughs> over. I think. I think... A definite four out of 151 isn't bad for on the spot. It's not bad. It's not it bad. It could be worse. Yeah. You could have gone like, uh, Zapdos, and it's just wrong. <laughs> Zapdos is in there, Jordan, though. Just, He's like just, number 89 just, or something, isn't he? I'll take your word for it. I don't I know. I think Zapdos is probably in the high, like, 130s to 140s. Because he's legendary. He's up there. He's legendary. Yeah, he's one of the original ledges. He's right up there. He was. Who was your favorite legendary bird? Jimmy, Jimmy boy. Zapdos, because Zapdos, Dr Drill easy. Peck was really, really good. I on, feel like that was a cop game. out, and that was the only one you can remember just because well, Jordan Articuno just said. Articuno and Moltres are also legendary birds to confirm. Oh, but okay. Zapdos right, is okay. Zapdos was it's the OG, and it's like got the little conflicting because he's he's a bird and he's an electric type, and birds are weak to uh, lightning, as everyone I knows. Probably. I mean, say, all living I things are weak to <laughs> lightning. <laughs> <laughs> that, is true, that is true. That is true. Yeah, there you go. Uh, rubber trees. Sorry, Jordan. What were you saying, Jordan? You said something then. I should probably say how I met Jim and how he knows so much about Pokemon, actually, or probably yes. leads into it. Let's uh, do that. Let's I met him playing Pokemon Go, and we're part of our group chat called Blokemon. So there we go. He knows quite a lot about Pokemon, actually. Because we're cool guys. We are. One of the cool guys. One of the cool guys. So, so cool in a chat dedicated to Pokemon Go. We are 30 year old men and we are great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I, so let's. Uh, the main episode today is going to be based around card games for any listeners wondering about that. Like where the distinction between digital card games and physical card games, like you can see right here, all these Poke cards I've got in my hand, where these sort of like blur the lines and why people want to collect them. So like I think it'd be a really cool place to start to say like where we started ourselves with like trading cards. So Jordan, do you wanna do you wanna start us off? Yeah, I'll take that. I started at okay. a young age with Pokemon cards and the Pokemon mm -hmm. was it the stickers as well? Is that yeah, Pokemon the stickers. stickers, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Um and then I moved on to Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Sounds like a drug habit progression. It um, is like a drug Pokemon habit. cards to Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> and then I think at one point I traded some like uh, parts of Exodia for some magic cards. And then what? Are you it. mad? Exodia was like the big rare thing, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they were fake, uh, the ones that I traded. Uh. So it was, I was at a, a net plus. So you, you cool. scammed someone, Jordan, is what you're telling us. <laughs> no, that I told them. I was like, I don't think this is real. And they were like, it doesn't matter. It's Exodia. 
I like, bet okay. he didn't say. I bet he didn't say. I did I, say. Uh, I'm not a complete bastard. <laughs> not complete anyway. I was uh, I, I was going when it, on on the research for all the card stuff. I was going through like videos about the different kinds of cards, and that just reminded me of a comment I read underneath one of the things. Where was it now? I need to find it. Oh, a, a grown adult stole like six of his really rare cards from a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. But jokes on him, they were fake, and I was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. Next yeah, level yeah. strats. So like how? What did you think of Magic? Because like, Magic the Gathering is one that I have no knowledge of whatsoever. Like, I, I of outside of the research that I've done for the episode. But like, what did you make of it when you tried it? I I never played them. That's the thing. I never played any of these card games apart from like a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, okay. With like a mate. That it was all just like the cards are kind of pretty, and everyone had them. You know, it was like a. Everyone plays Fortnite now. Everyone had Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon cards back in the day. They did, yeah, yeah. They were like the crack of the playground. The crack of the play... Plastic crack. Not plastic. Where? Paper crack. Card. Paper crack. What about you, Jimmy? Where did you start with uh, trading cards? So, much like Jordan, I started in primary school, so, or elementary school, if anyone's American, um, with Pokemon cards. The fir yeah. My first ever pack... And I've just Googled this to make sure my facts are right here. So my first ever pack, the little booster packs, were like £2.50 when I was a kid. I opened okay. a shiny Charizard in the first ever pack of cards I got. Holy which, fuck, that's great. Which I then sold to another child for, I think, five English pounds, doubling my investment. And <laughs> I've just looked online mm. now, and if that was in perfect condition, it would have been worth $350,000, apparently. Yes, for a first for a first wow. edition. Yep, they're worth absolutely loads. So, a poor financial decision. Yeah, like some of them, I've been getting back into Pokemon cards recently, and it's mainly just because I like the artwork, really. But if you if you look on the camera, you guys, there is my Blastoise that I got in my first booster pack. Hot I damn. still I still have that baby, and I'll zoom it for the people watching on YouTube. There you go. Not the best condition, I'll say, because I used it as in, in my battle deck. It was in actually a used <laughs> card. And I was kind of gutted to see that it was worth, again, worth quite a lot. And a lot of my, my cards aren't in the best condition. Um, but I've, got, I've just put them all in a new big binder because I was feeling special and fancy. Um, did, did you go on to any other cards from Pokemon, Jimmy? Or is it? So then I got kind of in. So I never even played Pokemon as the game. I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of a bit through the anime as it came over. Again, got uh, some yeah, cards, same. but never really played the game. And then recently in lockdown, have got a little bit into Magic the Gathering. Oh, so you're actually playing Magic now? So I can, I understand the rules and have a vaguely competitive deck of Magic Gathering cards. <laughs> vaguely competitive, almost threatening. <laughs> <laughs> almost thre like I could turn up and play someone and maybe wouldn't embarrass myself is about the level I'm at. Nice. Wow. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. Like, I I didn't know that Magic the Gathering was the first, like, trading card game. Like, in, in the research I was doing, I found that the... It's called Richard Garfield, I think. I think that's right. I've got in my notes. Uh, he was, like, a professor, a mathematician, and an inventor. And he got the idea while, like, wandering in the woods. And I guess that's why, like, in Pokemon, you have, like, energy cards, don't you, to, like, power mm -hmm. your monsters. So is it, that's what you have in Magic, isn't it? You have, like, areas of land, don't you? Yeah. So in in Magic, there's kind of five colours, which are red, blue, white, black, and green. So you kind okay. of... A load of your different monsters and spells, you pay a mana cost, which you get from these lands. So you can mm. have, like, one, or you could essentially have a mishmash of different colours. It Does it, like... Does it feel inspired by Dungeons and Dragons because that was a, I think that was what he was like massively into and then they were making this to be something to play in the downtime in like the D&D &D conventions so like in between when they had nothing to do so does it like come across that way yeah so it's very like high fantasy almost like you know the kind of like right. 80s and 90s like fantasy art that you'd see in like shady books and stuff like that um, yeah, yeah, I, like the the Conan the Barbarian artwork. Yeah, 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 that that kind of like 
that fantasy vibe of like all kinds of elves and weird monsters and stuff like that. And it's it's enormous. There's so much of it out there. Yeah, yeah, there is. Like I I know it's got like thousands and thousands of cards by this point. Mm. It's it's funny to me like I never was drawn to Magic the Gathering and I don't know if it was because like I I've always liked like bright colorful cartoons like I I like uh quite I, I was going to say imaginative, but I don't mean like that. Like magic isn't like imaginative vibrant. because it obviously is. Yeah, I always found them a bit too, like, it came across more like a Tolkien kind of thing. And yeah. I was never really interested in Lord of the Rings as a kid. Like I love it now. I think mm. it's absolutely amazing. But back then I was drawn to cartoons. So Pokemon for me was like the main thing. And then when I saw magic in comparison to that, it never really drew me to it, which is... I feel like it was a bit of a shame because it seems like something that I probably would have enjoyed. Yeah, it's definitely kind of quite a lot darker or it has aspects of like darker, being darker and grittier than something like yeah. Magic, not Magic, but Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, which is very like Japanese anime kind of style. Yeah, and we forgot the other one as well, Digimon, because they are Digimon. the champions. Was there a Digimon card game? Yeah, I... there was, yeah. Digimon was Digital Mantras. There was, yeah. They no weren't half as popular. Like the the Digimon cartoon came out, and I know it came out after Pokemon. It was obviously as a follow up because everyone was getting really excited about Pokemon. But yeah, the they brought the cards out shortly after. But you were hard pressed to find anyone else who really had them. Like I don't. I think it was me and one other person in school who had them, and he was the only other person who had like thousands of Pokemon cards. Like he had. Mm charizard and all the really rare ones he gave me a couple which was really nice of him when we were a kid but other than that there were, i didn't know anyone else with them whatsoever and I, I so i never played against anyone uh i could never play in any of the like tournaments or anything uh the Yu-Gi-Oh was popular in high school i'd say like year seven and eight you know like the first first years of high school mm -hmm. i remember yeah. people started to get into Yu-Gi-Oh cards then and I think their art style was like a nice middle ground between Pokemon and Magic, don't you think? I think their art style's really weird because the, all the different cards can have whatever art style they want, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's such a weird kind of amalgamation of like, yeah, this can be Claymation, this can be not. But Pokemon's gone more that way in now that it has some cards that are more realistic and some are like special clay versions. Or... Uh, do you want to yeah, there's really even... Funny? Yeah, go for it, yeah. So you mentioned Richard Garfield before. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, I bought a uh, a board game called King of Tokyo. Okay. Which I, I noticed today, as I was looking at it, I was like, oh, it says something Garfield on it. And it's made by Richard Garfield. I noticed oh, really? today. Yeah. No Out way, that's so cool. Yeah, I was well, like, holy go. shit. I just thought then, I was like, I've seen that name today. Fucking hell. Well, he, he went on to do quite a lot. He did one called Keyforge. He did Netrunner, which I don't know if it, that's related to the cyberpunk, like D&D &D thing. It is cyberpunk-esque. Yeah, okay, right. So I thought it might have been by the name because they're called Netrunners in the game, aren't they? Uh, he did one called Battletech, Vampire the Eternal Struggle. He did a Star Wars trading card game, uh, The Great Dalmunti Artifact, and the board game Robo Rally, apparently. But I've not played any of those, so I've never played anything by him. Right. That's it's funny, Check. isn't it, that he covers so much and you've not touched a single part of it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, it it seems quite strange. Like, I I thought the that playing the games as they were was much much older than like the nineties. Like, when I I think of like old like packs of cards that you'd get in like you remember like the cigarette things that you find in Red Dead Redemption Two, like yeah. They existed back in the 1900s. Like you would get these little cards to support the pack of cigarettes, and it's because the boxes for cigarette packages were soft. So they put these things in it just to protect the cigarettes. And then people obviously started like, "Oh, it's a collectible thing," and you get some free cancer with it. You know, you, that's how you how you get the the game. That's what you win if you collect them all. Uh, yeah, it seems like a weird way to get people collecting things back then. But I thought there was a game to go along with it, and it turns out there was not. 
at all. Right. They're just picture cards, really. Yeah, yeah. Like like the baseball cards that people collected all through, like, is it like the 70s and 80s? Oh, there was no game for those? I don't think so, no. Like, it, from what I, I've read online, the first trading card game that was, like, released as packs and battles and actually have a use was Magic the Gathering. Wow, that is really surprising. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. I was genuinely shocked by that. And that it took some guy like wandering the woods, like I said, to be like, we should make a game out of that. Like that seems like such a plain thing to do. Yeah. It's real that's such an odd thing. Just like walking mm. through the woods, like, I'm gonna make a card game. <laughs> like nothing anyone has seen before. <laughs> Not in the five realms. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a little quiz for you. Oh, Same okay. Quiz. It's uh, out of Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh. <clears throat> Sorry, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Pokemon. If you wanted to build a meta deck, so if anyone doesn't know what meta is, it's mm -hmm. uh, I think it's an acronym for most effective tactics available, but I could be wrong. But it just Whoa, means that I you're... never knew that makes sense, I... and I didn't know that. I did not know that. I either. never knew it either. I read it the other day. So meta is basically wow. it just means that you're using either the best character. I'm, I'm reading a description. You're using the best character, uh, the best set of items, cards, or other in-game items to give you, like, the best chance of winning. So, like, in card games, right. it's really prevalent because you want to have a competitive deck, like Jim said before. He's got a competitive yeah. deck, so it means he's not going to absolutely spank if he plays against someone. It's not just, like, oh, random spank. shit put together. <laughs> going to get whapped. Um, so, I thought, how much... Do these bad boys cost like a meta deck, yeah? Okay. And which do you think is the most expensive kind of game for having a meta deck if you've got nothing? You're starting out. Can I ask a question, Jordan, first? Go on. Are you, is this the question already that you've asked? Are you saying because cause there's so many different formats of these things, that's also okay. like quite essential to know? Or are uh. we just... It's just I'm just gonna go for like a generic. I googled a current each standard. We'll assume I, it's I, current and standard. <laughs> I googled um, meta uh, like Magic meta deck cost, Yu-Gi-Oh meta deck cost, and Pokemon meta deck cost, and then I just went for the top thing that said between X amount and X amount. Okay. So it's between Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Pokemon. Which do you think is the most expensive if you wanted to get a meta deck flat out? I can't remember how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! off the top of my head. So I can't remember what's It's changed needed. a lot, is what I'll tell you. It's changed a lot, Harrison, since I played. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. It is I have enough. a guess. So I guess think... Away. I think it's going to be Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I know in Magic, they do essentially what's called like rotations. So they'll bring out a bunch of new sets every year, and then the current met, like, standard will be the stuff for like, the last couple of years. So I think in Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't think they do that. So I think some of the things that are like meta might be really, really old. So they're not making them anymore. Oh, so they're more valuable that, is that way. Shout. Hmm? That Very is a good shout. That is that is my logic. I don't know if they do that in Pokemon. I don't know if Pokemon was on the options, but that's my guess. It is one of the options, yeah. What do you think, guys? I, I'm going to say... I'm going to say magic. Just, just to be... A little bit opposite. You can't be opposite of a three-way multi-choice <laughs> question, but I'm gonna, I'm going to say magic just because to stand against Jimmy Boy. Well, the winner is Jim. Oh fuck! Guess how much? It, like in dollars? Like it's between the, there's two hundred dollars space between these numbers. Okay. Like the low and the high end. Guess what the high end number is? I'm gonna guess it's very expensive by the way that you're leading this. Is it like is it over a thousand dollars? No, it's under a thousand. Okay, all right. Uh I'm gonna say five sixty. I'm gonna no. say like oh seven. I thought I didn't know if you were waiting for me or not. I'm gonna oh, say no. seven fifty. Jim's the closest. So it's between Holy shit! Five hundred and seven hundred dollars, from what I very briskly googled last night. A brisk Between Goog. five hundred and seven hundred dollars, because of all the things they've added, like um, they've added stuff where you do like loads of summons and like, uh, is it called uh, something where you combine shit? I don't know. 
but yeah, they do lot, all kinds uh, of crazy stuff in Yu Gi Oh. They do. I think a lot of them are kind of transferable though. So once you have them, you don't have to worry about it if you make another deck. But right, yeah, okay. it's that's ridiculous. Five hundred to seven hundred dollars. Uh, the next is Magic, which is between one hundred and fifty mm-hmm. and three hundred dollars, and Pokemon's around a hundred dollars. Right, that's surprisingly not that expensive, and I guess that's because it changes so often, right? Like they always, like the past three years, there's been I think three or four new kinds of Pokemon cards. Maybe I'm not too sure. So I'll speak about it more when I get onto kind of digital card games, but okay. when has less of a meta than Hearthstone, if that makes sense. It's like right. Gwent has a lot more kind of freedom with what you can use. Like you're never at a massive disadvantage because of how the game works. So you could go in with like a new, de- like a completely new deck as a new player and you can still win. Whereas in Hearthstone, if you play against someone with a meta deck, you've got no chance because of their win conditions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You can get stacked up against people like that where you just absolutely get slaughtered by them like yep. i noticed that in um the pokemon trading card game app so you can play digitally now and you can get digital cards that you you earn them for free just by playing and stuff and if you buy packs of pokemon cards you get a a code in there that gives you a pack of cards in the game as well so they're kind of like making it you know that you don't have to keep buying stuff over and over yeah but i was surprised that when you play one of like the vmax cards which are like the uh i've got one here like one of the the big shinies like that one it's like once you play that you can't that pokemon can't be beaten very easily and you pretty much just kill every pokemon that comes out against you so it seems a bit unfair that way in my opinion like a pay to win kind of thing not really it's not really pay to win but it's leaning that way. If you've bought the special deck and you've got that card and then you get it in the online game and then it's kind of that way, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I think that's the, what a lot of some like some games lean towards. But with physical mm-hmm. cards, it's different because with physical cards, you can buy that specific card like off eBay if you wanted to or like other card resellers. Um, yeah. And you've got it. Whereas with digital games, you can't buy a specific card You've got to keep getting packs. So I guess there is the benefit of physical there that you can just buy the one card you want and save yourself like buying a hundred pounds worth of packs and hoping you pull it. Mm. You can. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think guys, a lot... Oh, sorry, I'm bro. just going to have to stop one sec. Sorry, my laptop's just got to 94 degrees. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> hey, guys, we're back. Sorry, my computer decided to evolve with a firestone so uh it tried to set fire to itself so we had to restart reconvene and we're back air cool pokemon so i want to know jim jong why do you collect a thing why do you like to collect things well it's because things shiny things are pretty and like, it's fun to, it's it's ga- it's essentially gambling to open packs of cards and it feels nice to get good things out of the pack that's really why i do it I would say. Yes, it does. Yeah, I I don't know why, what drew me to it as a kid. I think maybe it was like, like you said, the shininess, the bright colours, that kind of thing. But I think on a level, I still am drawn to it for the artwork. Like I, I only noticed recently that at the bottom of Pokemon cards, it does has, like it has the, the artist's name who does each one. And there's loads of different ones. And that's oh, something yeah. that I've really liked to see. What about you, Jordan? What, what made you get them? Just because everyone else had them, really. Well, yeah, Pokemon with Pokemon are pretty cool. Like, if you were a Pokemon, what would you be, Harrison? Oh, probably a Giraffig. <laughs> oh wow, that is not what I expected you to say at all. No, Harrison. no, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. How uh, about you, Jim? What about you? Have you? Uh, yeah, well, have you got one? Ooh, maybe, maybe like I'm a champ. I'd like to say. Okay. Yeah. Going full I'm on. Go for a, is it uh, Dugong? The, se- the evolution of seal. Yeah. Yes. Pretty sleek. Probably moves through the water pretty fast. Yeah. Got a horn. I mean, this <laughs> this sleeker water-based Pokemon, I'd say, than the one based on a manatee. Is there? But <laughs> what like a? Uh, he's a dugong. He's not a manatee. He's a manatees are big big chubbos. Yeah. Fair. fair. But, I mean, Damn it's right a chunky. Fair. It's a, it's a right chunky fair. boy. It's not like a cedra. Okay, how about uh, a Dragonair? 
that's a cool one, yeah. That's sleek. Okay, that yeah. I'll, I'll have Dragonite. I'll have Dragonite. And then I can, when I get old and get fat, I'll become a Dragonite. <laughs> I'd probably, what about you, Jordan? What do you think you'd be? I'd probably go for like an Arcanine or a Growlithe because yeah. I'm ginger. Um, but failing that, I don't know. I, I once described someone as a joke, as a, a Krillia in the streets and a Lickitung in the sheets. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty I was cool, pretty proud of it. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with like that or like a fucking, I don't know, Moltres or some shit. Big fiery boy, yeah. Yeah, yeah I could see that. <laughs> wow, see that. thank you. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. You have the, all the birds. You're the fiery legendary bird, Jordan. Thank you. That's too kind. That's all right, man. Yeah. Do you think you have any... Well, of, of the cards that you've got, that you still own, is there any that are like financially gaining... Because, like, a lot of people collect them just for, like, financial gain, don't they? Especially now. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry, I don't hear you. Jordan, go on. <laughs> uh, that was I an have open none. question to either of you. So, okay, yeah. so Jordan has none. So to you, Jim. <laughs> uh, so I also, in lockdown, because of seeing loads of people do fancy, like, pack opening videos, I got jealous. Yeah. I wanted to do it. So I went and spent too much money on Pokemon cards. Mm -hmm. And then I did the maths on what I'd got. And I was actually up if I sold on my stuff. Not there you like go, loads, man. There you go. but I, I did not, I've not sold it. So I have lost the money because I bought Pokemon cards. But if I <laughs> sold them on, I wouldn't lose money according to the no price way. on the internet. That's pretty sweet. I, I will say that the of the packs that like what we bought the other week, you seem to get, well, unless we were very lucky, like I think I opened seven packs. And I got eleven shinies. That's pretty good. So like, that's quite a. On, yeah. the, on the camera, people can see all the fucking shinies uh, I got there, and one of them's like a, one of the the special rare ones and shit. But like, it it seems to be the older first gen ones that are like very very valuable, doesn't it? So like all the old Pokemon cards, uh, a lot of the new ones are sought after. But it's the value of like the old Charizards and stuff that seem to be of high. Oh, what the microphone of high value. Yeah. I want to tell you a story of when I was a child, and someone stole a rare Pokemon card from me. Wow. Did you beat them down, Harrison? Well, I thought about it because <laughs> there was only me and him there, Ooh. and I wouldn't steal it from myself, Gareth. You've been doxxed. <laughs> and the thing was, I got it back. I have it here. I'll put it... I'll, I'll turn my camera back on so you guys can see it because it's a sorry state. So it was this dark gold bat. Can you see it on the camera? Yeah. Oh, yes. He put it in his pocket and folded it in half. Oh, Gareth, what a dick. Piece of shit. I'll zoom in. Are you ready for this, people on the YouTube? Sorry, audio listeners. That motherfucker's that bent. Nice big fucking crease. That is that. not a grade A gold bat, I'll tell you that. Bastards. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Which is really annoying, because like these rocket ones are actually quite valuable now. Like the Dark Blastoise is worth a hell of a lot, and that's another one I've got in my collection. But like, did you guys ever, ever have anyone like steal any of yours on the playground? Because kids, that's why they got banned in our school. Uh, no. I remember because no. we Pokemon was a Pokemon cards first came about in my youth when I was in primary school, like transitioning to high school. And I remember hearing like horror stories of people all gathering in this part of the school yep. where they trade cards. And some people are just charge in and just start pushing people over. And then it would just be <laughs> cards everywhere. Pandemonium. And just grabbing stuff. Absolute pandemonium. So oh, I was terrified shit. of going to high school. <laughs> I bet that just like fear for life. Like, yeah. I saw some people are getting like in those, uh, you know, like someone beats someone and they flip the table over. Yeah. And my first thought wasn't like, wow, that was a real dick thing to do. My first thought was, how are you going to tell your card apart from his? Like now they're all mixed up everywhere. That's like it just seems like point. a plot. Yeah. That was my first thought anyway. Mm. As a tidy boy. <laughs> tidy boy. <laughs> tidy boy. Do you think like it goes into like, where does collecting turn into hoarding? Jimmy. 
Well, I'm I'm very obsessive about collecting stuff. So I like to okay. like tick everything off. Like I'm the sort of weirdo that will play a game and I will be like, I'm going to look at the achievements or the trophies or whatever it is, and I'm going to like try and okay. tick them all through. Well, and like try and go for platinum and stuff yeah. like on the PlayStation. I mean, okay. sometimes it's silly and I end up not having fun on a game because I'm forcing myself to do these silly things, but it's the way my brain works. So I like to go, I could get all of this. But then I think about it as an adult and go, there's absolutely no way I can financially account for buying all of the Pokemon cards. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a hell of a lot. Like, I, I think the the way I'm looking at it now, like, the reason I started getting it is because they've done this certain set called the Hidden Fates, and it's all a Gen 1 Pokemon, but, like, redone. So I think I'm only going to collect that set. Like, I... I don't want to buy loads from different sets and jump around. Like I'd rather collect the the 150 original and then maybe if they do a Mew or that kind of thing, just so I've got at least one full set that's kind of nice to have and keep them all in good condition this time, keep them all in proper cases, that kind of thing. I just, uh, I don't know. It, I think hoarding starts when you're not looking after them. I think, you know, when you see like people's houses that are just like covered in clutter, like everywhere. Mm. Yeah. I think if, if like a game collector is collecting games and they're all, you know, aligned on a shelf, it's all looked after, it's clean. I think there is a massive distinction there between collecting and hoarding. I, yeah, I can agree with that to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. in the getting into like Magic the Gathering and looking into it though. You do see all these people who clearly, like on eBay and stuff like that, who are selling like cards and packs of like thousands of just random cards. And they're clearly like mass opening millions of things for like money, selling the good ones. And then just they have all this like crap left over that they're then selling yeah. on. So I imagine their houses must be insane. Yeah, just covered. <laughs> just an absolute bomb site. Yeah. Well, let's let's move on to some digital card games then. So, Jordan, tell me about Gwent, because that's something the listeners want to know about. Okay, so Gwent is a card game that originated in The Witcher. Mm -hmm. So you'd be walking around, and you'd be killing monsters in the game, and then someone would be like, do you want to play around a Gwent? And you'd be like, I can stop my search for this missing girl to play Gwent. Uh, so you play Gwent, and then I think the goal was to just get like all the cards... I'm so sorry, my camera's freaking out and stuff. So let me move closer. Don't worry, there we it's go. all right. Um, so it then moved into just kind of like playing it in the game. And then they released a mobile version and a desktop version mm -hmm. through GOG, which I played a fair bit of. So I used to play a fair bit of Hearthstone. And then I got really bored of it because Hearthstone's very, <laughs> very kind of uh, in-app purchase based. Like, yeah, it is. you yeah. get like one pack a week or some shit, like one pack every few days. And it depends how much you play and stuff like that. Uh, and mm -hmm. I just couldn't deal with it. It was just too much. I didn't want to spend real money on it. And I did. And then I just regretted it. Uh, and then I stopped playing it. And then Gwent came out and I managed to, I think I've managed to get all the cards I want within Gwent within barely any time at all. And I bought the introduction pack because I was bored. And I was like, I could do right. with a few extra cards. Uh, and I bought that and that was like a fiver. And I spent five pounds on Gwent and that's it. Right. And then at least that way you've put something into the game rather than getting just a free game and playing it. At least then yeah. the company's made a fiver on the game and you're getting some enjoyment from it as well, aren't you? Well, that's it. There was, there's this big thing that people do where it's like, right, the amount of time I put into Hearthstone, which is a free game you can justify how much you're spending because of how much time you're getting out of it. Mm -hmm. Which, as much as I, that's a good idea, I dis, I, I'm just like, no, it's it's a free game. You, you shouldn't have to spend money on it. There shouldn't be like an incentive to spend money on it. Like spending money on it should be cosmetic, really. Which some of it is, but some like, if you want, if you get a new expansion and you buy, and you've not saved up your gold or something, and you buy, like, 100 quid's worth of packs, you're miles ahead of everyone else. Miles yeah. ahead. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to buy advancements. But that's something that was in, in the news again the other day when they were talking about 
what was it now? It was some MMO. I can't think which game it was. It was some MMO anyway, saying that you could pay to level up quicker. And then some people were saying it's a good thing because if you don't have as much time to play, the times that you do play, you're getting absolutely battered by everyone. So is it then better to pay for the XP if you're that kind of player? But then it dev devalues the game to like the hardcore players, doesn't it? Well, exactly. So my big thing is uh, a good example is the way that Hearthstone and Gwent do packs. Mm -hmm. So uh, I should probably mention that in Gwent, you're playing a card game where you're trying to have a higher score than your opponent. So you can have a deck yeah. that is uh, geared towards taking their score down, towards boosting your score up, depending on whether you play Monsters or Skelliger or Northern Realms, it's all different. Um, but the way that they do it differently is that in Hearthstone, you get like a pack a week for free. And then within that pack, you're, I think there's like a, less than 1% chance of getting a Legendary, which is the highest rarity of card, which a lot of builds kind of revolve around. Yeah, yeah. So that that's like, you've really got to grind your way through to get extra cards or you've got to pay money. So you're kind of playing with what you got. Um, whereas in Gwent, you can earn kegs, which also have five cards. But when you get uh, a, a keg and you open it, the center card, when you press yeah. on it, it gives you a choice of three cards of the rarity that is the highest rarity in the pack. So, nice. okay. so you get, yeah. uh, I say it's the highest rarity. It's whatever the rarity you get. Um, so mm -hmm. you get the choice of the th out of the three cards to which one you want. So you're kind of like, right, I can make a decision on which one of these I actually want. And if I don't want any of them, I can always just dust it and then make a new card or scrap it and make a new card. Um, which Hearthstone really has as way well, but Hearthstone has the thing where you can scrap cards as well. But um, yeah, and you can like craft them, can't you, or something? Exactly. But yeah. again, so with I think you earn so few cards that there's no point. So yeah, I don't think I ever ever used it the whole time I played it. Like I do, I'll say about Hearthstone that that is a way of doing like player feedback and juice oh, really yeah. fucking well. Like, it feels great to play, like, regardless of how fast you earn cards, like, the actual gameplay and the actual battle system is really good. Like, it's perfectly simplified for mobile play and you can just pick up and play. Like, 100%. you don't, it's not even hard. And, like, the dragging and dropping the attacks to, like, hit things feels great and yeah, I was impressed with it, but I do agree about the, the card collection part of it. That's yeah. it. And that's a hard thing to do. Like, I mean, I think that's why so many people started doing like the NFTs and like blockchain games because you're actually having a collectible on a digital thing that has a monetary value. Whereas like if you have a card in Hearthstone compared to like a fucking ultra rare in Pokemon, you know, like a real card that you hold, there is a, yeah. there's a massive discrepancy between like held There's monetary value. value. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, it even went down to like when me and my partner got all these Pokemon cards the other day, I got one of the cards that was, uh, which one was it now? It was one of the VMAX ones. And because it's like a special pack, you got this giant card, which is like this giant shiny that's like the size of my head. Anyone on camera can see it at the moment. Uh, and you got a, what's it called now? Like a code card, like I said before, to get it in the trading card game. And my partner got that ultra rare shiny that I got the real one of in the trading card game, the, yeah. the digital one. And she was like, it just doesn't feel like anything though. Like you got the actual rare card that you can hold and put in a case or put in a frame on the wall and I've got it on my iPad. It just, yeah, it, it feels superfluous. Whereas if you had it as like a blockchain thing, you could then go and sell the digital product, you know? So I think we'll see more of that going forward with like when Ethereum moves on to like its proof of stake. I think we're going to see more digital card games there. I'm hoping it doesn't go that way because it's like Gwent for me, as long as, as well as like Hearthstone, it's just a fun game I can play. Like yeah, I don't yeah. want to put loads of time into spending money on it. I don't want to, I just want to like play this game where I just have a bit of fun. 
I think yeah. that's a big issue when it comes to physical collecting is that if you want to get into it, there's such a high ceiling for like cost and especially lots stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh learning. A lot of these mobile games is like a five minute mm -hmm. tutorial and you're set or maybe like yeah. 10, 15 yeah. minutes. And that's great. That's perfect. But yeah, if I were yeah, to learn Yu-Gi-Oh, you can grasp it I'm, that's like days of effort. Days. <laughs> days. Yeah, it is. And then, yeah, you're right. Like the, the, the amount of money you have to put into those games to get the most out of them is a, quite a turnoff for some people, if, if that's what you want to do. Like, I'm not really collecting Pokemon cards to play that much. Like, I'm collecting them as a nice collectible. Like, yeah. to have something cool, like a book full of these old cards to sort of relive my childhood. But, like, like Jimmy, what, what do you think of, like, what we've just said there? Is there anything you want to add to what Jordan said? So I think in the there is something actually in the Hearthstone thing. You know, you guys were talking about the money element and the card yeah. pack collecting thing. They have, because yeah. I've kind of got back into it a little bit over lockdown, they have made a couple of changes that make it a little bit nicer. Okay. So they have done things like, um, so now when you open packs, you can't get duplicates until you've kind of got everything in that set. Oh, that's good. Um, and then there's others. So they've also made these, you know, like when you look at Pokemon, like when you buy the physical boxes and you could yeah. buy like a pre-done deck. They've kind of brought yeah. those out as well for each of the like classes and characters, which are actually some of them are pretty good. Can you good. buy them with okay. in-game money or is it real money? So you can buy them with, you can definitely buy them with real money. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if you can save up and buy them with gold in the game, but it does mean that if you're say a new player, you you could say I could spend ten pound and have something that is competitive. Right, and then yeah. you've got a you've got a chance then to battle against other yeah. long time players, haven't you? Because you've got at least newer cards that do something. Yeah, yeah, but then again, okay. with like the the way card games work in Hearthstone and stuff. Because there is like this cycle of new cards coming out and cards kind of disappearing out of the game, there yeah. is always this cycle of you've got to spend money every like three months or four months to kind of stay relevant in it. Oh, because they I do think expansions as well, don't they? Yeah, you've got so to they're pay bringing the out... adventures. So you yeah, need so th certain cards. Yeah. So they'll have an expansion, I think, like three or four times a year. And then every two years, old expansions will kind of disappear out. So you could have spent tons of money. And then you're kind of having to spend money to like stay relevant, and it gets a bit like you know, like the sunk cost fallacy, where you're like, I need to spend money yeah, to keep up to date with it. it. Yeah, it's just, it's just a bit of a to like I don't want to say toxic, like, uh, like you know, like a work environment or something. It's just a bit of a toxic money grabbing environment where it's mm. like with Gwen. The reason I like it so much is that I don't have to play every single day, six hours a day, to get kind of like what i want out of it i can yeah, play yeah. as i can play the same amount of that as i did of hearthstone and end up with so much more and i think that's what i like about yeah. it because i've got no loyalty to blizzard which i feel like a lot of people do kind of have a loyalty to them whereas like the witcher thing it's like i enjoy the universe the card game is much faster to progress in and mm -hmm. i just find the gameplay a little more rewarding and that's you can remain a high, a high functioning, filthy casual. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And I think, you know, with those kind of like mechanics that they add in, like the daily quests and all these kind of things in a lot of, they're in a lot of like free to play games. Yeah. And there are, they are yeah. there to give you things to do and give you free currency so you can carry on playing. Yeah. I find that after a bit of time, I get overwhelmed by them and I start to feel like I'm trying to min max the way I play the game and I get stressed because... You start yeah. throwing the games. Head thinking. Yeah. You throw like, games just, because of the, the what you need to do. You're just like, right, I played the cards that I need now. I'm just fucking quitting matches because I don't need to play them anymore to get these yeah. coins. Or it's in my head that I need to go, I need to play three games of Hearthstone before the week reset so I can get some new weekly yeah. quests. And then I realize yeah. I'm playing a game, but I'm not really having fun. I'm just, it feels like a bit of a, it feels like work. Yeah. I agree. Jimmy, we don't need to be stressed. You've got to be there to enjoy it. And I mean, I like, if if you're feeling stressed, I've got a little game that all of, well, you two can play if you'd like to take part in a little has game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll play. So, I put the name of a game into multiple translators and went back and forth between many, many languages <laughs> and okay. got some hilarious results. So I'm going to play with you guys. Guess that game name game. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So the first 
game name game is Darkening the List of First Sins. Do you want to go first, Jim? <laughs> are these all these are card games? I'm assuming. Uh, no, these are these are computer games. These ones. Okay, okay. I think it might be Dark Souls Scholar, Scholar of the First Sin or something like that. Is my guess. Amazing, Jimmy gets Holy it in what? Oof, That's not oof. nice, my boy. Well done. Are you ready for the second one? I have three. Uh, Jordan, the last one is like on last a bonus one that it's, it's going to be harder. So the second one is the last part is the second part. <laughs> the last part is the second part. Oh, yes. I didn't know there was going to be a game. I've not prepared my brain for this. I um, know. Uh, the last part is the second part. Is the second part. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... I have. I have. No I, I think I have a semi decent guess. No idea. Yeah. Or at least I think I could guess at the. Si I th is it a Final Fantasy game? It's not. Damn. It's not. Okay. The last part is the second part. It's not like Army of Two or something, is it? Fortieth day. Nope. No. Uh, Shot Select claim this comedy is the best game ever made. I can't remember. Uh, Mass Effect. No, it's not no. comedy. Uh, I'll give it you. Go on. For the sake of the listeners. The Last of Us Part 2. Oh. That does make sense. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. The last sense. part <laughs> is the second part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready for the third and final one? This one's challenging. This okay. one's challenging. Okay. I've, I've put it into two things, so you've got two versions. So Because I thought it might be that difficult, you might need two versions. Okay. The first one is Twin Beam Force. And the second one is Double Jet Energy. Jesus Christ. Um, that may have made it harder. Twin Beam Force. So this... Uh... This is a nightmare. My guacks were nowhere near this hard. I know. Oh, I know. It was for the N64. There's a hint. Star Fox. No. Star uh, Wars Shadows of the Empire? No. Think about the words. Double jet energy. What words could you change around to get those to like... Try and think about it from the point of translation. Like, if it's changing, it's going to be a word that's close to those. Christ. Double two. So double is two. Could be. Jordan, Jordan, but also th Jordan's think about been twin. His math. Sorry. Think about twin. It's also got twin. <laughs> oh, two. Mario Kart Double Dash. <laughs> no, that's, that's for the, the GameCube. GameCube. Shit. Sorry. The greatest console ever made. Fuck. Um, twin. Fucking. I. I genuinely to, have give up? no to idea. To I don't I was going to say something like Jet Force Gemini, and I don't think that was on Jim's the game. Jim's got it! Jim's got it! Nice. Yes, it is! Nice, Jim. I I only because microphone. of the word Jet. I've never heard yep. of that game before. Jet Force <laughs> Gemini. So twin, Gemini, Janos, the twin-faced god, which is why I think it gave twin force, it gave energy, and force... <laughs> And then Jet, it gave Beam for some reason. It I also gave Jet. I have never heard of that game before, yep, I yep. don't think. I'm a master of this game. You are. He's so Aren't good. Me? So <laughs> good, man. I mean, Show. On, on the hindsight, I should have chosen the, the game name games of card games to be card game name games. <laughs> but I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> looking back. Looking back, I fucked up. But... <laughs> I think that rounds us out nicely for this episode. Jim, where can they find you? Do you want people to find you or do you want to remain anonymous? No, um, they can find me at... So on, I should have made a list of this, on Twitter, on uh, Twitch, Instagram and YouTube, all as The Jim Jong-un, because I'm not as creative as I thought and someone had already got it with Jim Jong-un, so I had to add the the... <laughs> Ah, no worries. Well, at least you got it, kind of. It's, it's close, it's close. Close Don't enough, worry. close enough. Close enough. And Jordan, where can they find you? At the Mr. Jonkor, everywhere. 
And how about you? I can indeed. And well, I could have said everywhere, me. couldn't I? That would have been way wild. more sensible. <laughs> yeah, you could have just said everywhere. Just short it down. Nice and short. There we go. And you can find this podcast at Grief Burrito everywhere. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Leave us a review. And we'll see you next week for more stuff. Goodbye. Bye. Say bye, guys. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you for having me as well. This is oh, my first ever podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> it was great to have you. We'll have you. You say it's your first podcast. First ever. Well, not the first one. I've, the first one I've ever been on. <laughs> this was my podcast virginity. Wow. Such a pleasure to take it. Not in a creepy way, but it was good. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>